are going to get started. I cannot tell you what a beautiful sight it is to be up here and look out at you all. It's so great. Yes, we're here. We're together. You made it. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Annie Notary. I am the Women's Ministry Coordinator. coordinator? That's how you say that word, coordinator. Um, here at New Life Treasure. Um, and I very loosely coordinated this. Mostly uh, other amazing women put this together. So, um, but I'm just, yeah, I don't know how you're coming in tonight. If you're like me, you're a mix of just so excited and happy to see people you haven't seen for 18 months. Um, so excited to meet some new people and get to know some new people. And also just really, really tired <laughs> and weary and worn thin by the last year. But good news, that is our topic. And so this beautiful geode is to represent the hard, the, the, the weary, and the joy and the beauty. So they're all together. And the beauty is that the Lord knows that. And he works um, in and through those hard situations. I know, um, I remember Mike Hollenbach once said to me, he's like, really? Only in the Christian life do joy and sorrow coexist perfectly. Um, and so we, we have that gift um, in Christ. So um, I'm going to get us started. And Charlotte Gleason, where's Charlotte? She's going to come up and uh, kick us off. But let me just pray for us um, before she does. Lord, we are so grateful that you have brought each and every woman here both in person and virtually, and that we can participate in this together. Lord, this is, this is your work. It's your doing. And um, we are just excited to sit and learn and be with one another and communion with you. Lord, would you uh, just move your spirit in each of us, uh, give us the encouragement and the joy in the midst of sorrow that each one of us needs tonight and, and throughout tomorrow as well. Thanks in your name. Amen. Thank you, Annie. So I'm back. <laughs> so you know that game or that thing when like someone has to do something they don't do like, hey, who's going to clean the bathroom? And everyone's like, not it. So apparently I'm slow at putting my finger to my nose. So I'm taking resumes for next year who would like to do this. So I've got my eye on all of you um, individuals out there who I think would be good at this, which is most of you. So watch out. <laughs> All right, so Annie showed you these beautiful bags by Ruth Ann Burke, and um, my online friends, hi. I want you to feel like, I feel like I'm talking to the ether out there, but hi, I'm so excited that you're here with us. And let's check out what's in here. You probably already did, but I just wanna highlight a few things, if you don't mind. So first of all, let's just say how clever the rock candy, right? You get it, you get it? Hopefully you get it. If not, come talk to me later, all right? Um, so we've got the rock candy. We also have a little um, remembrance. Look how awesome this is. I had no part of this, but look how cool it is. The women on this committee are incredible. Anyway, yeah, look at that. And chapstick, because that's always good. So a couple things, too. You'll see some art supplies in there. Yeah, you're going to get to create tonight, and that's going to be amazing. Um, so that, that's what the paper, the pencil, and the Sharpie is in there for as well. And I want to call your attention to one more thing. Look at this beautiful um, note card here. We would encourage you over the course of the retreat to think of maybe someone you could encourage or write a thank you note to, maybe someone in here, maybe someone you've met, someone who's ministered to you or one of our speakers. Write them a note. Give it to them. Um, so that's what this is here for, okay? So um, you can also see, hang on to this. Um, this kind of will walk you through if you want to take notes, see where we're at. Um, there's scripture in here. We'll talk about the hour of silence. So just keep track of that as well. All right? Ethernet says hi and see forever. Yay! I'm so glad. Okay, thank you for saying hi to me. See, look at them. Isn't that cool? You should say, yeah, I need a little affirmation here. Okay, thank you. My word, it's hard enough, okay? We don't have the beach as a scene to like go to, so I'm doing what I can in our church. All right, here we go. So um, one of my jobs up here, and, and let me just say, I'm excited because I wore lipstick tonight, <laughs> right? Because you can see my lips. I think it all wore off in the time that it's like all in my mask right now. 
but how cool that I got to wear lipstick. Um, yeah, I should have gone a little bit, but you're like, you do not look like you're wearing lipstick. You're very washed out. And I was also told that I shouldn't have worn white because if I step over this line, I'm going to blind everyone online. So I'm sorry. Rachel has been assigned to yell at me if I go past this sticker. That one right there, Rachel. Okay, all right. So welcome. I think I forgot to tell you my name. I am Charlotte Gleason. Um, so lucky you, you get to meet me. Now, I had to think of an icebreaker, which is always the awkward thing. And how do you do it in a pandemic? So we're not going to do the human knot. Um, anyone ever do the human knot? Raise your hand if you've done the human knot. So awkward. I can't even imagine doing it if it wasn't a pandemic. I'm pretty sure some of you, if I made you do it, would go to the bathroom for the entire time and never come back. So I'm not going to do the human knot. And the trust fall um, wasn't going to work in a pandemic. And that's all kinds of problems um, with the group of women. Um, we won't go into that. So we're not doing that. So we're going to do the good old sit stand game. Now, I know you're like, seriously, I just want to sit. You're going to be sitting for a while, so just humor me. It's hard to find icebreakers in this setting. Can we just call that out? So you're going to help me out, and you're going to be nice to Charlotte. And those of you online, you had better. You had better be sitting and standing. I'm dead serious. You watch them, OK? <laughs> Beth, Beth Ann, I know you're in charge, so you watch them. Sit and stand. All right, so here's how we're going to go here. And I already forgot I had a slide. See that? Um, isn't it good to feel connected? Like, we're craving it, right? We're craving connection. And I told this to Annie. I was really surprised how many people signed up to come. How, look at it. Like, for real. Re affirmation. I know you have masks on. Affirmation. OK. All right. Yeah, I think it's great. And I think it points to this thing that we've been missing. Yeah, we've had connection, but just even the the presence, the, the physical proximity of somebody around us, I think that's really exciting. And um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So here's how the sit-stand game is going to work. It's not going to be the last person standing gets a prize. Sorry. I want you to be more active than that. If the this, this item that I show you, if it fits you and you're like, that is true, you stand up. OK? I'm going to say it one more time. Again, I'm a teacher, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like make sure you get this. If it's true for you, you stand up. If it's not, guess what you do? 10 push-ups. Just kidding. No. You stay seated, OK? But it's not last woman standing here. So you just it, you keep going up and going out. And we're going to go rapid fire because I only have a couple minutes, and we're going to go fast. So it'll be a good like thigh workout, right? OK, here we go. All right, so let's just practice. We'll practice one time. Everybody ready? Look, I see you, see you back there getting on the edge of her seat. It's not a race to stand up, but I'm, I'm happy. I like that engagement. OK, here we go. So you're all ready, OK? Um, you are a woman. <laughs> Look at you guys, girls, women. Look at that, OK. You are at a ladies' retreat. <laughs> OK. You have on purple shoes. OK, you got it. You got it. I thought maybe somebody has on purple shoes. No one? Pants. Oh, we win. Look at you. Um, anyone online have on purple shoes? Kim King had on purple shoes. Anyone? Are they standing or sitting? Good. OK, I got a thumbs up. I'm watching you as much as I can. All right, I have eyes on you. All right, here we go. All right, so let's try this out. All right, now these are pandemic themed. I don't want to pandemic you to death, but hey, it's a thing we are experiencing. OK, here we go. All right, I need my glasses. I'm getting old. I'm not. I'm so young. OK, here we go. Am I looking the right direction? Zoom or I am. Good, because this looks funny, doesn't it? Doesn't that look funny? OK, here we go. All right. You heard many opinion. Is this true? You have heard many opinions about the pandemic. All right. You've discovered or rediscovered a place to walk, bike, hike, or just be outside since the pandemic. All right. You've heard yourself or others wonder, perhaps with a tinge of desperation, when and if their children will go back to school. All right, there we go. You or someone close to you has started a new hobby during the pandemic, bread making, anyone? 
All right, we're doing pretty good. I, and I thought of these myself. I'm like, way to go, Charlotte. Here we go. All right, your gas budget shrunk, but your food budget grew. Yeah, my food budget is still big. Um, we're trying to work on that. You worried even a little bit if you'd run out of toilet paper, cleaning supplies, or meat at some point, even a little bit, <laughs> at some point during the pandemic. <laughs> you tried Zoom for the first time in 2020. This is great. Look at how, I want you to look around. We've got a lot of common, right? You see that? Okay, here we go. You wore sweatpants, yoga pants, pajama bottoms with a dress shirt. Definitely have done that. My husband taught me that. He's been doing it for years, so. You considered cutting, styling your own hair or someone else's. You admit it. How many of you have children who regretted that decision that you made? Yeah. Um, I tried to cut my husband's hair. He stopped me after the first slice, and then we, we moved on. You went through a cute mask buying phase, and now you have an excessive amount. Any excessive mask buyers? Oh, look at these two. Megan and Anna are pointing at each other. Yeah, OK, all right. I just chose black because, you know, it's slimming. All right, here we go. You've Googled where you can find a COVID test. Yeah, I definitely have done that and driven myself crazy. You bought a pet. I want to see, yeah, anyone online standing? No, no, okay, look at, look, let's look at the people who bought pets. Okay, you ready for the next one? Here we go, of course you did, Lisa. Of course Lisa bought a pet. Well, it's in the works. It's in the works, okay. Maybe the next one will come soon. You've had moments of regret about buying the pet. See how they're still standing? See that? Yeah, yeah, we know that. All right, and you've enjoyed getting a COVID test. You should all be sitting. All right, great job, round of applause. Okay, so I wanted you to see that we actually, I've made you take so many different personality tests. If you've ever come to a ladies retreat, I wasn't gonna do that, I thought about it, but I've run out of animals or Shakespeare or I didn't wanna give you full Enneagram. So, but I wanted you to see some of these connections that we've all experienced. And as, as much struggle and strife the pandemic has caused us, there's this pretty incredible connection that we have having suffered together. And I don't think that's outside of scripture, is it? Um, we're told we're gonna suffer. And I think we experienced it perhaps more acutely. And I think there's a lot to, to be said about that. Um, so I'm looking forward to what our speakers talk about. Um, some who have experienced, we've all experienced suffering in different capacities, but hearing their unique stories of not just suffering, but the solace that Christ gives to us during that time. So the first speaker we're going to take a look at, there she is. Ruth Ann, where are you? There she is. Say hi, Ruth Ann. Oh, what did I just say? <laughs> Linda Ruth. Sorry, Linda Ruth. Ruth Ann Burke, are you, is she online? she here? No. Okay. Well, that's what I was getting confused with because she's artistic and she created the bag and you're artistic too, Linda Ruth. So Linda Ruth Pascal, this is her picture from her wonderful website. Is, tell me the name of your website again. The Color of Poverty. The Color of Poverty. Okay. So her website's The Color of Poverty. I, I highly recommend that you read it. Um, I read the material in there because it was really great. And I wanted to introduce her by way of something that she said on that. And I'm going to let her talk. She's a teacher. She's an artist, she's a creator, she's a mother, and she is our sister in Christ. And I am thrilled for you to get to interact with her, but I wanted to pull something that was written on her bio from, I didn't ask your permission, Linda Ruth, but hey, I figured it was online so I could use it, right? You know, I'm giving you credit, I'm not plagiarizing. Here we go, all right. So I'm gonna read this to you. She says, Linda Ruth seeks to honor the courageous and inspirational individuals she has had the privilege of meeting and calling friends in many instances. They have become some of her greatest teachers, broadening her lens on life, gratitude, and first world problems. Her desire is to produce images that inspire change and identifies the universal dignity of every human being. May we all be more mindful of the stunning sufferings of this world and be ignited from within to see how our creativity 
gifts and compassion might be used to give a voice to the voiceless and bring hope to the world. Yeah, isn't that awesome? And when I read that and thought about the theme for our, late, for our women's retreat, I was like, wow, I want to share that. And I'm excited to, to hear about that and that passion that you have. Um, in order to prepare our hearts for that time and transition from goofy Charlotte, um, we're going to just have Aaron and Rachel and Helen lead us in some worship. And I'm thrilled to be hearing some voices of women together. This is going to be really sweet. Um, mask or not, I don't even care. We're just all together singing, and that's going to be really, really great. So please, um, ladies, if you'll come up and join us, and um, Linda Ruth will be coming up afterwards. Thank you. I'm so excited to sing with you guys tonight. Um, it's been a while since I've been up here. Um, and you know, I'm so grateful these women who are with me um, in the back, Sarah and Rachel, thank you ladies so much. And Helen and Rachel up here, and I'm just so thankful for their willingness to serve and for their gifts. And um, last week with the kids, we were doing some devos, and we were in 1 Corinthians 12, and we were talking with the boys about how the body is made up of members who have gifts. And one of them said, so what's my gift? Like, what's my role? What do I bring to the body right now? And I was like, well, your presence, just you, who God made you to be, encourages others when you answer a question in Sunday school, when you ask a great question in youth group, when a friend is excited to peg you uh, with the dodgeball at youth group, they are excited to come and be with you. Your presence matters. Um, and so tonight, what I want to encourage you all in is that no matter um, if you've been to retreats with New Life before, if this is your first time and you don't even go to this church, your presence tonight here matters. God's glory in you and his glory story in you is what matters. And we are so thankful that you are here to worship uh, the God of the universe with us tonight. Um, so if you would just... Please stand as we begin our time. Um, my prayer is that we would just allow the holiness of God to reign over us, that we would come before the throne with an awe of who he is, with an awe and wonder of the love that he pours over us. So let's sing together.
Psalm 27. One thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me.
Thank you that you answer us. When we say, Lord, I want to seek you, you come to your children. Lord, you run after us, pursuing us. And Lord, I pray that our hearts would be surrendered to your word tonight, surrendered to you and who you are. And Lord, I just pray for my sister, Linda Ruth. Lord, I thank you for her spirit. I thank you for her story. I thank you for the journey that you have walked with her. And Lord, now I just pray that her words would be your words, God. That she would bring glory to you and all that she's done through you. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you mind praying with me again? <sighs> good, good Father, that's who you are. I thank you, Jesus, for giving us new life in your Son. We thank you that you who sit high come low when you need us. And Lord, you know full well what this planet has been going through. It's your world. It is our Father's world. And despite the sorrow and the sadness and suffering, we still get to have joy because our joy is the deep, settled confidence knowing that you are in control of the details of our life. We thank you, Lord, that you establish the work of our hands and that you number our days and every breath is on loan and you are in control of that and we can find rest in that. We thank you that you invite us to enter into your presence. And Lord, if you're not here with us, we meet in vain. We love you, Jesus. We, we surrender this evening to you. We 
submit our spirits to you. Um, we, we long for you. Uh, we need you. And we thank you that we are your, your baby girls and you are our Abba Father. And we love that. And we love resting in the shadow of the Almighty. We love the new song and the hymn of praise that you put in our mouth. We love that we taste it and we see that the Lord is good. So this night, get your glory in the story. May we find refuge in you and be hidden with Christ in God as you establish the work of our hands and continue to show your favor as you recalibrate this earth and uh, create a, your kingdom people in preparation for that great day when we see you face to face. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So I have a, a new word, and the word is no K. <laughs> so when Kirsten, um, when Kirsten first asked me, she came in, she sent me a text, you know, we just, like, everyone's really tired and exhausted, and we really don't want to really ask anybody to do too much. I'm like, yes, checklist, tired, exhausted, weary, right? That's me. So do you think you could, like, just do, like, an art project, something like that? And on a really organic chemistry, microscopic cellular, mitochondria's food vacuoles, all crying, no, okay. <laughs> I thought, that's it. Like, there was nothing in me that wanted to be here tonight. So I figured I would start out with honesty rather than saying, praise the Lord, great to be here. I couldn't wait. I'm so excited. I knew, because you know what? I'm tired. And I didn't want to. And I said, no, OK. Do you know how that is? Do you ever do that? Like you're saying, like, I really don't want to, but somehow yes comes out. I guess it's the Holy Spirit, or maybe it's like, you know, Moses with Aaron holding, and I have an Aaron, he had an Aaron, <laughs> and all of you holding our arms up together. So this is our evening, and I'm just, you know, it, turned, it started out being sort of, not dread, I wouldn't say that, but just like, oh, one more thing. And then it turned into just a deep, um, humbling privilege to be before you. So thank you for entrusting me to be here um, in a season of hard. And the beautiful thing is you're all in it with me. It's not just me. We've all been through the COVID thing, but it's COVID plus. COVID plus your marriage, your health, your kids, your finances. COVID, it's a COVID plus thing, right? So I started um, camping out in, in Psalm 90. Um, and when I was reading it uh, and, and asked to do the artwork, too, I thought, well, it's never just with Jesus, right? Oh, it's just Jesus. It's just a miracle. It's just an art project. He just showed up. Like, it's never just. And especially with me and art, it's never like, let's just do a project. Like, it's deep. Creative, being creative saved my life, it's how God came to me through the arts as a child. Most of you know my story. Those of you don't, um, having lost uh, my only brother when I was 11, and then um, my mom, you know, dying of cancer two years later, and, um, you know, significant loss. Anyway, we all have had it, no big deal. Well, yeah, it is a big deal, but it's not, it's not the emphasis. The point is God redeems that. God meets us. He uses that sorrow, and that's where he does his finest work if we yield, if we surrender in that brokenness. So uh, I thought, okay, I better do that. This, I better do this. This is an invitation. So that word's been a theme throughout um, this preparation for me, this invitation that God invites us to. Uh, and Colossians 3, 1 through 3, it has a great invitation for us to set our hearts on things above and our mind on things above because we're hidden in Christ. And so even though that's not a psalm, I'll get to it. I had developed this project with students a year or so ago, and I thought it would really be a beautiful, uh, simple, kind of a creative exercise and design for us. So this isn't going to be like artsy, craftsy, Pinterest stuff, and you're going to give it to your grandma or something. This is going to be reflective. This is going to take you sitting with God. Um, so I, 
I had this, this problem with being hidden in Christ because I thought I was really spiritual when I just am with him in God. That verse is like double lock, with Jesus in God, like that's secure. And so I was away in Florida last week. Those of you who know me, week 18 I live for. I have this little place that I go to to be hidden in Christ. And I'll be, if I have just been so convicted, it was like a battle of the prepositions. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm in God. And Jesus sort of, you know, that gentle voice like, are you sure it's not hidden from me? Oh, no. No, I'm pretty sure I'm with you. <laughs> Are you sure? And then I started thinking about when I was at that beach last time, there was a crisis in my life, and it was a hard, and I wanted to go hide in Christ and be with him. And there I am on the beach, and all of a sudden I just hear this, help, help, and I just like those kids, and I look out, help, help. And I look out, remember, this is my first day of just rest, done with people, done with everything, just you and me, Jesus perfect circle of red blood and it's a shark attack yeah and i don't know what got into me but all of a sudden it's just i find myself running out to the ocean you know to help this woman i'm like i'm a lifeguard like i'm clara barton like i know how to deal with sharks and i'm like and she's german so then i become german like to her friend oh yeah yeah your friend she bite her leg I don't know, I do that weird thing with people in restaurants, I talk their language, like one from column B, one from column C, or yeah, you know, I just, so I started thinking I, I could talk German and help her friend who went for a little walk and came back to find her dear friend's leg hanging off. Um, and so there were tons of people around. Long story short, me and one other gentleman were the only ones to stay by her side and I ran and got my little towel from my hotel, and they used my towel as her tourniquet to keep her hanging, her leg hanging on. And I got to hold her hand for like 40 minutes. And I could feel her heart beating in my hand. I thought, that's how, I, that's how it is with you, Lord. You, you carry our heart in your hand, and we're hidden, and we're secure, and you hold us right there. And I thought, this is not how I wanted to spend my first day alone, hidden with you. I just wanted to be reading like a book and drinking tea. And, and, and I had to really come to terms that I hide from him sometimes. And then I hide from you. And I get tired. And I have nothing left. So I guess I'm challenging you on your prepositions and what being hidden in Christ looks like for you. And... And then I thought, this is like a little repeated theme happened again in Colorado a few years ago. My, I went out, another crisis, be with Aunt Ann and Uncle Vernon, my family, you know, love me well. The next day, phone call, hospital, her son, my cousin Morris, diabetes, dead. And here I am, like, I really came to Colorado to just hide with you and not have to deal with people or help anybody or do anything for anybody. And here I am sitting holding my Dear cousins, 33-year-old, diabetic, cold feet, and seeing his wife and his mother at his head. It was like Mary and Martha or some of our, our characters in Mark that we read about. Just, it was surreal. I thought, okay, what is the lesson in this besides I'm selfish and I don't want to help anybody do anything <laughs> when I'm tired? And I thought, he who does not slumber or sleep. Thank you, God. Thank you that you pour your power on us. And then he just sort of whispers that verse. Remember that whole, like, when you're weak, I'm strong thing? <laughs> oh, yeah. When we're out of the way. So the, the, the reality is we don't have a lot of time. And in the Psalms, which we'll take a look um, Oh, I'm going to go back because our little draw near. We're going to draw near to God in Psalm 90 a little bit. And we're going to think about our time. And we're going to think about what it is to be hidden in Christ. And we're going to think about how he establishes the work of your hands. Because in both those instances, 
my hands were holding his feet, my hands were holding that woman, and, you know, take my life, let it be, take my hands, right? Our hands are so essential to everything we do, especially as an artist, too, but the way we love, the way we extend Christ, our hands are his extension, aren't they? So tonight, my invitation to you is to, we're going to draw near, and Thank you, Kirsten, for putting sunflowers. You'll see them in the flowers out there. I said, can you get sunflowers to match our pretty, our pretty picture? So I appreciate that, but drawing near is going to be kind of twofold. Draw near to God, and, and he will draw near to us. But then later on, you're literally going to draw near, <laughs> and we'll talk about that. Um, but I'd like us to look at uh, Psalm 90, verse 10, and in your beautiful handy-dandy booklets that these marvelous women provided for us. Um, another one of the reasons why I said yes to this uh, evening was because of verse 10. Our days, are, our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. And um, I was thinking of that verse, and I said, wow, 60 or 70 or 80. I just turned 62. I got seven years left, technically. I better get in here and do this, you know? Like, when you think you could drop dead tomorrow or the next day, it motivates you to say yes to a lot more things. So, um, and a lot of us have been thinking about that. And we need that other, that other verse to teach us to number our days that we would gain a heart of wisdom. But I, when I was camping in Psalm 90, I saw this painting. Uh, it, the gentleman, he's a German artist. His name is Ludwig Noster. And he painted this, um, he, he was only 15, he wanted to paint, but of course his parents, you're not gonna get a job, doesn't pay money. Age 17, he was in the Berlin Academy, painting was on his mind, he went on to be like a portrait painter for monarchs and emperors. And then he moved to Holland, he died a very painful death, kidney disease on his bed, but the last painting that he did before he died was Psalm 9010. The elder and the younger, and I appreciated that so much, just in terms of uh, that time of his life when he was ill and recognizing how fragile time is. And though I'm pulling for like a Caleb, wasn't he like 85 and going strong, right? None of us really know, do we? And we're sobered, especially in the time that we're living in. So I thought that was kind of neat to see that painting. Um, okay. So then verse 12. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And then uh, verse 90, 17. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. So how many of you, um, let's talk in terms of creativity for a minute. How many of you have committed the creative part of your life to Christ? Has anyone ever asked you that? You commit yourself, your children, your family, your job, your community, your neighbors, your church, each other. We commit basically everything to him. Did you ever think as he establishes the work of our hands and we ask for his favor to fall upon us, to ask him, how can I commit the creative part of my life to you, Christ? So the distinction that I often make with my students is between art and creativity, because art is what people do for a living, and they get paid, and there's deadlines, right? But creativity is how you do your living, your loving, your counseling, your teaching, your gardening, your cooking, your reconciliation, your biblical conflict resolution skills. It's how we do our living. What is the fifth word of the scriptures, gals? One, two, three, come on. Huh? Fifth word. First thing we see him doing. Any image bearers here? Anybody here made in the image of God? Just curious. Couple? Yeah, good. So, you know, you do the math. <laughs> so as we think about, um, oh, is it gone? Oh, you don't want to see that yet. Pause, c'est la. That's the c'est la slide. Um, as you think about, I was thinking about Martha and Mary a little bit, right? The busyness. I even was thinking about when I came in here earlier, we were, we were checking on some stuff. I came in, 
and I saw Annie doing her thing, and Techie's back there, and Lois out there, and Flowers there. I said, this is what we were built for. You know, we were, we were busy, everyone's doing their thing, but only, Jesus said, oh, Mary's right, only one thing indeed matters. So tonight we sit at his feet, so when you go to engage in your project, and you think about how can you establish the work of your hands, and how you can commit that creative part of your life to Christ, only one thing matters tonight, and that's forgetting about yourself and exalting Jesus. I'm giving you that invitation. Use your, let's really use your imagination. Let's pretend it's a healthy, good world again. <laughs> let's not worry about all the things that consume us. And let's really, really let our hands this evening be an extension. So the healing part of the hands has come profoundly to me. Some of you know um, I have a ladies' art night. And so I really miss doing that with you because of COVID. And nine times out of 10, when I try to get some of you to come, you're like, I can't do art or I'm not creative with Ruth. The enemy has worked overtime in the creative arts. I'm just telling you, there's lots of lies that you're believing, sisters. Whether you're a, a spouse, a parent, a grandparent, a counselor, if you're dealing with human beings, you've got to be creative. You have to draw on that creative power. Creativity is a tool. It's part of your weaponry and your armor that you have to get dressed in every day. It's a perspective, it's an attitude. So this um, COVID took us away. We couldn't do it together, we couldn't do art. So that's another reason why I wanted us to come together to do something very simple, but to engage in that creative community art making and give yourself that quietness. Um, the other thing is I kind of got ripped off on my Bible study this year with you. And I was ready to teach on Mark 4 um, in that boat with that storm. And then a storm came for me. Um, some of you know, some don't. My, my son Joseph, who's 23, uh, was, was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. And so I wasn't ready for that. Who among us would be? So um, I couldn't teach Bible study. And so that's another reason why I wanted to be here with you tonight, because he's in the storm. He's in the storm with us. And he, he quiets the storm. And even though they couldn't understand why he couldn't wake up, he knew he wasn't going to die because he knew the Father's will. He knew his ultimate crucifixion. He knew how he was going to end, so he wasn't fretting, right? So I've been fretting a little bit. Like, Jesus, really? Mom, brother, dad, like, I don't really have family. My, my babies, they're six hours away already. That's hard enough. You can't take Joe. And my hands closed. So this is like confession time, right? because I really live with open hands and surrender hands. And my hands shut down. And I felt like his favor was lifted. And I couldn't even create and make art for a while. It shut down, it's very real. And then I spoke to my son and I said, Joe, you know, the counselor hat, mom, are, are, how are you processing? Are you, are you angry or upset? How do you feel about God? Blah, blah, blah. You know, clearly those were questions for me, not him. <laughs> you know, and without a beat, and this is for you, my son, he said, Mom, he said, it's a sinful, fallen world, and things happen, and God's going to take care of me. That's about it. That's about it? Like, no more drama on this, Joe? <laughs> like, you have cancer, you're 23, you have a six-inch tumor in your neck, you have two in your chest. And I thought, I raised the warrior, I raised someone who gets the gospel. And so, this week is again, teach us to number our days. He is so good, because this week is kind of the incubation week. He had his last chemo treatment last week, and next week we get the PET scan to see how's it going, did it work? So you know what, this was the perfect week to be with you, so I thank you for that. 
and I'm thankful for my son's testimony. I'm thankful that God redeems all of our pain. He's a good economist, right? He doesn't waste anything, especially pain. So I want to keep encouraging you with your heartaches and your pains and your losses and everything we're in, your COVID plus life. Keep seeking him in it. Don't close your hands. Mine, they're open now. <laughs> but you know why? Because of my son's faith. Because my son's faith convicted me. And so Joe started doing art. He has the cancer, and he started making these cool wooden cutting boards. And I thought, oh, you know, I raised an artist too. That's what it's about. And I saw God's favor on him. And I saw God's peace on him. And every time I'd call him in the morning, on his way to chemo, pray, you know, just being strong mom for him. And then he'd call me on the way back, not even be able to talk. And he'd just always say, it could always be worse, mom. Well, <laughs> you're right, Joe. <laughs> so here we are. It could always be worse. But God has established work for us to do. You don't get to quit. You don't get to give up. You have to stay open. You have to be empty. You have to be a recipient. You have to respond to his invitations. That invitation to set your mind and set your heart in the heavenlies. To, set, to respond to that invitation to be hidden with him in God, not from him. Can any of you relate to that? Any of you hide from him ever? No, I mean, you don't want to admit it. Okay, I'm the only one, I guess, but um, sometimes, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do. Um, in Psalm 143, verse 5, 6, and 7, it says, I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. So again, I want to leave you as we're going to enter into our creative time. Open your hands. Open your heart. Let him pour out his spirit. We'll pour out the praise. And then in verse 7, 7b, 8b, 9, you can look at it later. Three things. It just says, do not hide your face from me. Show me the way I should go. Rescue me from my enemies. I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit leave me on level ground. So we can be level-headed. I was listening to Rick Warren the other day. He's like, if you think you're going insane and you're losing your mind and you're asking yourself that, he said, don't worry. If you're asking yourself that, you're in good shape. It's the people who already lost their mind that don't ask because they're already over the edge. So if you already feel like you're going crazy and you're asking yourself, don't worry, you're OK. But keep asking yourself. <laughs> and I felt that was very comforting to me. Um, so the teach me, the rescue me, the show me. So those are kind of some of the things I want you to be thinking about as you enter into this kind of creative experience. Um, I want to, I have a little quote. I'm going to wrap it up because I, I know I want to give most of the time to you to create. I had a couple of books and a bunch of other things, but just to get to the point, the only book I pulled out was this one. It's called Art and Fear. And I use this in my college class, and I tell my students, it's really kind of art and life philosophically. Not by Christians, but there's a lot of good, solid stuff in there. So before you enter in, and uh, let's see, am I going backwards? OK. Before you enter in, I wanted to just read you something about art being made by ordinary people. That's us. Show of hands, how many of, you, how many of you are artists in here? Any artists in the house? Couple, dear. Up higher, Jen. She's like, me. Any, cre any creative people? More, OK. I like that. How many of you feel totally like, oh, I didn't know where to do art tonight. Why did I come? <laughs> yeah, a couple of, oh, oh, that was really up high. OK. This book is for you. <laughs> Um, the class that I teach at Arcadia is for science majors and ed majors, and 
uh, health admin and you know, business majors, they're not art teachers. They all come in like all left brain, right? And so then I push them over to the right brain all semester, and then they leave all whole brain using both left and right hemispheres of your mind. So this is what I'm hoping for you tonight. Um, for those of you who are already free and in touch with your creative spirit, hallelujah, you're gonna have fun. And those of you who are not, it's a simple exercise and design that we're going to do. So good news, the Philadelphia Museum refused my invitation to exhibit your work there, so no pressure's on, okay? So don't worry. But Art and Fear says this about making art. Art is made by ordinary people. And so ironically, the ideal artist is scarcely a theoretical figure at all. If art is made by ordinary people, then you'd have to allow that the ideal artist would be an ordinary person with the whole usual mixed bag of traits that real human beings possess. And here's the big hint. The giant hint about art, because it suggests that our flaws and weaknesses, while often obstacles to our getting work done, are a source of strength as well. Back to that, in our, in our weakness, his strength is made manifest, right? So maybe draw on what you perceive as your flaws and weaknesses. Remember, we have a transformational God. We have resurrection, power, access, and this applies to the creative part of your life. This applies to the way you move. I mean, you can write a check. I know many of you can write beautiful notes to each other. So think about it from a pure physiological perspective. It's like, you know, motor scale. It's just moving your hand. But you're, in your brain, you've convinced yourself you can't. So let go of that fear. Uh, a lot of the chapters in, in this book, one is called Fears About Yourself. The next chapter is Fears About Others and how others perceive uh, what, what we're doing. Um, so don't worry about that. Just have fun and be concerned with how God perceives you and how you extend your hands and how he'll show his favor and visit you. And the last invitation, there's a quote that says that perfectionism, any perfectionists in the house? A couple, yeah, how's that working for you? Yeah. Jack Miller used to say we're recovering Pharisees, so I say we have to be recovering perfectionists too. And the book says paralysis is an invitation Excuse me, perfection is, a, is an invitation to paralysis. Does that resonate with any of you? Yeah. And does it even resonate with you about how you come to God? If we think we have to have it all together be before we can enter in. And it's au contraire, isn't it? So last night I was in a meeting, a Zoom meeting with a board meeting interview for an organization and they were about to vote on me and two other people to join the board and before they left the one gentleman said i just want to ask you quick how do you meet with god i love that question and i was reading um in dan ortland's gentle and lowly thank you annie the gospel is the invitation to let the heart of christ calm us into joy for we've already been discovered included and brought in and I thought, that's how I meet with God. I said, I don't really kind of meet with him. I just like live with him all the time. Like, it's just me and him in this house where I am. And sometimes we duke it out, you know, sometimes we're fighting, <laughs> you know, his arm is not too short, but that's still in relationship, right? And so I'm learning not to hide from him. So as we meet here together, this this is what meeting with God is, isn't it? All of us together. Isn't this beautiful to see our church as a living organism again and seeing each other because we're so weary? So what I want us to do, we're going to, we're going to do a little project that's called Hidden in Christ. So if you have your clipboards and you have that nice stocked white paper that Annie, I love that stock, you knew I would. It's beautiful. And your pencil and your marker. So what I want to do now, I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you one photograph. We're going to hear one song, and then I'm going to send you out. So what I want you to do, I actually did it on here as well. 
with, and I, I, I asked them, please get pencils, because I know this, the art and fear thing, and the perfectionism thing, for you to commit to black permanent mark on a white piece of paper is frightening. I used to say, remember that show, The Fear, the fear Factor, a few years ago? And I, I said to someone, I said, I, most people would rather dip their hands in 100 goat eyeballs than face like a white, empty canvas. It's just, where do I start? How do I, right? That first mark, what if? I just want to say this to you. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Have fun. Take a deep breath. So what I want you to do, and, and I, you don't have to do it yet, just kind of stick with me so you can see where we're going. I did it on this paper, and I, it's up there too. You're going to write your name, I and mean, unless your name is like Murgatroyd, that's long, like maybe just write Murgy or something. Okay, I didn't write Linda Ruth, whatever. So um, you're going to let your name dance on the page, okay? No, we don't want boring, like straight line, right? So look, some of you are like ready to do it. I love it. Some of you are like, and others are like, Ready to go. That's humanity. So you're, gonna, you're going to write your name and use your name as a basis of the design. And then what we're going to do, you're going to pull out the lines and start thinking about designs. And I want you to start to see the letters in the alphabet as if they're a design. If you even want to turn your name like upside down so you're not like so pre-programmed to what your letters are, start seeing the, the N is like, oh, these V's, right, and A's, and start putting little patterns in there, and then how is it all going to connect? Because what we're going to do by the end is be hidden in Christ. So the object of the game is to see how well you can hide your name and then see if people can guess whose it is. So pull it out. Whoop. Okay, and then Linda. Okay, I know you could probably see, but... Think henna art even, right? Think patterns, stripes, dots, spirals, zigzags, circles. Just pull them out. Again, look how simple. Just start to, can you see that, right? That's not too hard. Obviously, I went, I skipped a few stages after getting to there. <laughs> so I did some with my college students. Can you guess the name? See if you can guess. They, we did this, this project with some other students. Can anybody guess? You see any familiar let, num, uh, letters? Let's put it that way. Yeah. That says Matt. See any letters? Uh, Ruby. Oh, good. Ruben. Excellent. It's kind of like, um, you know, 60s pop art, op art. Remember, you know, some of you, you're really too young for that, really? Aw, aw, okay. Guesses? Elijah. Elijah. So, I show these to you to inspire you. Most of you probably feel like, I could Right, some of you. So, oh, one more, and then I'll show you. What do you think that one is? It's so good, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Who is it? I see an I, a, an H at the end. I'll find out later, I'll tell you, but it's so good, I don't know, <laughs> which is the, the goal. So now that you feel so intimidated by these college students, I want you to see the other students that we, that we did this project with, and I hope that that inspires you uh, even more. Okay, are we kind of stuck, gang? So these are my precious students at Our Lady of Confidence over at Bishop McDevitt.
which is being sold. And these are young, beautiful high school students with Down syndrome. And they're so proud of their work. And they're so free. And my college kids come in and they're like, you know, uptight and nervous and what's it going to be and what do we do and what do we say? And these kids are just <laughs> establish us. Linda Ruth, what are we going to do today? What's the project? They don't care what it looks like. They don't care what yours looks like. They just love being with each other. They just love creating. So I show it to kind of make you feel guilty, <laughs> but mostly to inspire you. <laughs> Not really guilty, but like perspective, right? They're so proud of their work. Nolan. So we had buddy systems. They did one for my students, and my students did it for them, and we gave it to each other. And so these are the most beautiful artists in the world. And they, they know Jesus in a very particular way. So I wanted to encourage you with that. So as we, as we enter in, I wanted to share one photograph and a song. And then after that song, we're just going to sit quietly, and you're just going to start. And Erin, it's so beautiful because the first song you had started with hallelujah, and the last words of my song is hallelujah. So hallelujah. So this photograph, uh, one of my favorite photojournalist, humanitarian artists is Lisa Christine. And uh, I really appreciated, Charlotte, your research <laughs> from the website. Those of you who don't know me, the things that were said in that site had to do with my missions work in Africa and South America and Cambodia and Haiti and just places that God has taken me in poverty. So when referencing some of these people in poverty who I got to do art with and be with, it wasn't just you guys, you're my buddies, I love you, but that was referencing the color of poverty, which was this profound juxtaposition of deep pain and poverty and suffering, and yet this brilliant coloring and patterning and Li women living in shacks on dirt floors wrapped in these powerful, gorgeous fabrics and doing art with women scarred beyond recognition from acid, right? And doing projects with poor children in Peru. So that's who that was referencing, the work around the world with these people who have so less than us and yet have this spirit and this freedom and this joy. So Lisa Christine is one of my favorite humanitarian photographers who inspires me as well. And this, this piece is called 10,000 Gateways. So I want to read you a little bit of, about it because it's sort of how I want you now to enter in. And in, in your little book, can, can you see where the songs are to our, excuse me, the words are to the song that we'll sing, which pulls together our Psalm verses, is it the next page maybe? Yes. So it's by the Porter's Gate, a bunch of scholars and pastors and artists, musicians who got together and wrote some songs. Um, I want you to impose yourself as if you're that woman. And even though we're all here together, I want you to get with God quietly in your little space, in your little hallway. This piece, 10,000 Gateways uh, in Japan, it's, it's the Fushimi Inare path of 10,000 Tori Gateways constitutes an iconic place meaningful to all who have the privilege to visit. She says, I arrived early in the morning to make this image when it was quiet and contemplative. And that's where we're entering into now. This image to me is like a meditation piece. I'm drawn into that deep, saturated, red, amber hue. The gates on either side of the path, all 10,000 of them, form a passageway. And each time one steps through one Tory gate, one is stepping from the secular to the sacred, so that's what we want to do. We want to leave this world behind right now. And we want to enter into the sacred. 
into the spiritual world. And she says, there are 10,000 opportunities to go deeper. So I'm just giving you this one <laughs> right now, but there are 10,000 more. So if we could put our song and hear this worship song about establishing the work of our hands, and then we're going to leave you to create, and then I'm thinking Charlotte or somebody is going to say, time up, or do we have a slide that says three minutes before we close? OK. Sounds good. So let's, let's just acquaint ourselves. I'd like you to kind of receive this song, if you would. And then I'd like you to release it and to do it. Let God establish the work of your hands. Be mindful of your days that are numbered. Teach us. Teach us, God, how to live creative, vibrant lives despite sorrow and suffering. It's possible with him. Want to play it? And if you feel like worshiping, lift your hands, do it. He labored in vain. Can you go crank it up a little more? Without your spirit, you stand with no strength. I know my time is passing away. of your hand what will remain let the favor Stand up and let's sing this. Sing it and worship God. And lift up your hands. You're free to do that. Establish the work of our
So they always make me do the dirty work of ruining the entire atmosphere and the mood that's going on. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Linda Ruth, I'm sorry. I was definitely in the zone back there, let me tell you. Um, Works in process and throughout the weekend yeah. and with your families at home and take your time. I just jump started you. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> That's good to hear. And we want to encourage you, like you can take this um, outside. Um, there's, it's very atmospheric out there right now. There's lights and flowers. Um, if you want to hang out in here and inhale the Sharpie, you can do that as well. Um, the masks help, I suppose. But this is an ongoing project. Um, and I know the teacher, Linda Ruth here, would love to see, not to examine your technique, but just to see the expression. So um, keep working on them when you get a chance. We want to offer this time now um, for a time of fellowship outside. On your way out, you hopefully have noticed the incredible display from Kianga Kids. And I have been given a official memo of announcements for you about Kianga Kids. So I'm going to read them. Okay, I'm doing this, Lois. I just want you to know I'm doing this right now. Here we go. All right, so there, um, keep in mind that this is supports children's health care project in Kenya. This is something we've done a lot. Um, it's beautiful, and it's, it's even, it's also beautiful who it's contributing to and the people, the hands that are making this work. So a couple specials, because we all like specials. Earrings are buy one, get one half off. All right, keep that in mind. Um, there also is going to be a jewelry repair table. It's if you walk out to the left, you'll see that. So you can bring your broken pieces, and we'll try to help for a small donation to, um, the, my, to, to the ministry. So you can donate what you'd like. So if you don't have anything tonight, you can bring something in tomorrow. Um, within reason, I mean, I have like my engagement ring has been broken. It has a platinum setting. I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to fix that one, and that's okay. Um, but so just if you have something, it could be a great opportunity to have that fixed. There's also a table with reduced items if you are a bargain hunter. Um, I'm not going to tell you where they're at because I'm going to get there first. So you're going to have to go find that table on your own. You're all going to like run out there, mass exodus. On your way out, there also are water bottles um, and some cookies, prepackaged, so safe. <laughs> um, there's also some gluten-free options and chocolate, which is always a good idea. Um, so continue on, uh, talk to each other, uh, go outside, enjoy the tent, enjoy the atmosphere, and enjoy. Good? Okay, so one thing is... I forgot something. I meet back at the end of the retreat. You can meet okay. the retreat, but... Annie wants her clipboards back, <laughs> so you better get them back to her. And she's going to have a spot eventually to get those back, but you can use them for the retreat. So maybe put them in your bag for right now, and then we'll have a place at the end of the retreat to get that. How's that? Okay. And Rachel, some, hi, yes, online people, I'm so sorry. I'm so glad you're here, and I want you to go eat chocolate or drink coffee or keep, you can keep working on your project too. Everybody just like say hi. I don't know if they hear you. Like, there you go, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, so go, go and disperse. I'm going to close with a word of prayer before we move on, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for Linda Ruth's words and her passion um, and, and for the work and the words that you gave her and just the ministry she has. Um, I pray for her son. I pray that you will heal him, Lord, that you will give her um, strength and peace um, no matter what happens as well as Joe as well. Thank you for tonight, and I pray that our fellowship is sweet, that we will enjoy the time together, and you'll give us rest tonight, um, that we will be rejuvenated for tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Yeah.